Luke, the UK is housing so many asylum seekers that more than half of our foreign aid budget, which is normally earmarked for developing countries, is now being spent in Britain. Data released by the government shows that spending on refugees surged by 600 million last year, forcing the overall aid budget to rise by about 2.6 billion. Now, the government policy is to spend 0.5% of the national income on foreign aid. But diverting the cash to house migrants domestically has caused that to rise to about 0.58%, the equivalent of £15.4 billion. So in September last year, more than 57,000 migrants, most of whom arrived in small boats, as we know, uh, were housed in hotels at a cost of, yes, a staggering £8 million a day. But aid organisations, they've warned that filling the domestic migrant housing spending gap with foreign aid cash is coming at the expense of helping vulnerable people overseas. And look, this is all turning into a horrible mess. Uh, the government keep talking about how they're going to stop the small boats, and they haven't. Uh, they keep talking about all the things that they're going to do um, and, and all the things that they can't do because they haven't got enough money. And yet they're hosing the cash that they've identified when, you know, Lord Cameron, uh, you know, years ago stood up and said, we must, you know, help all these countries overseas. And they were doling out cash to whatever reason and giving it to ridiculous projects around the world. Uh, it, it was a nonsense and it was hosing it, but at least we had it. Now they're using that money to house and deal with asylum seekers, which seems to be a bit ridiculous because it's sort of hiding how bad it is. I think at some point, and I don't mind which party it is, they're going to have to get a grip of this. We do have to have a better way to deal with the boats and to stop them. We do have to have a better way of processing people quicker so that if they are going to stay in the UK, they become economically productive. And we also have to have a system that the hotels that these people are staying in, I'm really sorry, that is not the place to house uh, people who are seeking asylum. It's all a, a, but, an absolute mess and a throwing out of money. But that is cheaper. It's been proven that it was cheaper when we had had the migrants in hotels than the current plans they've been doing, putting them in eye bags. Yeah, but we shouldn't be, they shouldn't be housed in hotels for more than a few weeks. Yeah, they shouldn't be. They've been there for but, months but, but, but that would mean we'd have to process them, which the government aren't doing. But currently, housing them in hotels is still the cheapest option that we have. It, yes, if... But if we had processing centres, if you like, that somebody came over to, and they were processed within a period oh, of time... Oh, well, that'd be great if the government did their job, James. Exactly. But that's not going to happen. But I think yeah. the point that I'm making is... Rwanda, for example. Uh, what the, yeah. uh, <laughs> throwing out of money. I think, Jeff James, you're right. I think that until we sort out the processing, but also the deportation, because at the moment, deportation doesn't mean deportation. No-one is being deported once their asylum claims are turned down. So until we can actually sort out uh, accepting lawful claims, rejecting unlawful claims, and then deporting unlawful asylum claims. I think we almost need a moratorium. Uh, we, we almost need to say, no, enough is enough. We need to mm. put down the barriers for the moment, like they do in Denmark. Mm. This is the amount of people we can cope with. Because at the moment, more people are coming in. Even the people that we turn down are not being deported. But why are we losing so many cases? I mean, Ed, uh, you know, without wanting to make a sort of political point about this, but would you... Do you understand or do you know or have you got insight that can explain to us, the, the you know, the, the general public, why so many of these cases are failing? And, and the well, It's very hard to, you know, somebody asserts that they're at risk in their home country. Obviously, to a certain extent, these tribunals, they're run by kind of lawyers and lay judges. Uh, you know, they're held in sort of municipal offices. These are not kind of full court hearings. Uh, they're going to be more... Their, their prejudice will be more sympathetic to the person seeking... Uh, asylum, and uh, it's it's harder to say uh, no. But it's interesting. I mean, we're out Why? of Europe. We're out of Europe. Why? Well, because you don't want to risk the fact that if you're wrong, that person's life could be at risk. But in any event, even if you don't give them asylum, they're not going to leave the country, are they? They're going to disappear. There's no process for holding people. There's no process for deporting them. It's, it's very slow. Uh, it is. The whole process doesn't work. But the other thing is, you know, we're out of Europe now. Europe has literally this week passed a law to kind of bring into uh, place uniform European asylum processes, the same kind of border controls around the European coast. For the first time ever, the opportunity to effectively share the load between countries, which is the big, big breakthrough that is needed because it's such a toxic issue domestically in every country. And as usual, we are on our own on this. But I agree with you. It's a major area of concern. Whether you're pro-immigration, pro-asylum or not, people on both sides want it to be controlled and regulated. So, Ed, what do you think will happen? Uh, let's assume that the Tories lose the election. I don't think that's a massive leap. 
<laughs> and you know, then asylum policy, again, will be rewritten by the opposition Conservative Party. And I just keep thinking, given that we all assume Rwanda's going to fail, what could the next big idea be? You know, it's well, going there to are have... two things that have to happen. One is the whole immigration debate has to change. You need a proper, proper... Almost like, a, I mean, I hate it when politicians say a debate with the public, but you need a proper immigration policy that says this is why we need immigration. For example, the numbers that you look at, a lot of those are students. Now, most people don't think of students as immigrants. In fact, they think of them as people cash cows because they're yeah. paying a fortune. So you need a proper debate about immigration and why you need it and what kind of levels are acceptable. And then dealing with asylum is much, much harder. But I agree with James. There are certain, you know, you, you have to, frankly, invest in it. You have to have proper immigration centres, proper processing, put the money into how you deal with people who come to this country seeking asylum. Mm -hmm.